welcome to atcm the emergency medicine channel today let us discuss about uh, tomagi phenomenon and dawn phenomenon there are two important conditions which can produce early morning hyperglycemia when we treat uh, patients with insulin sometimes if we can see that patients uh, sugar levels are very high during early morning hours there are two important conditions one is uh, post hypoglycemic hyperglycemia other one is uh, low insulin level producing hyperglycemia these are two important phenomena once you understand this you can adjust the dose of night night dose of insulin so hypoglycemia is one of the major problem when we are treating diabetic patients because uh, patients may be taking insulin patients may be taking sulfonylurea uh, or uh, other type of ohs and uh, especially when the patients patients are having uh, renal failure they can have uh, severe hypoglycemia due to insulin or ohs that is because most of these drugs and insulin is excreted out through kidneys so whenever we have hypoglycemia so you can see here hypoglycemia if there is an hypoglycemia there will be counter regulatory mechanism that counter regulatory mechanism uh, maintains our blood sugar to normal levels so uh, according to the blood sugar criteria it is it has got three important levels level 1 level 2 and level 3 level 1 is blood sugar uh, concentration less than 70 and more than 54 uh, other one is below 54 third one patient can have uh, abnormal altered behavior mental status and other uh, physical disabilities so we will not go to the levels here because we are not discussing hypoglycemia that is already discussed so now we'll go to the uh, other important things in this topic now symptoms also we have discussed in the last class patients can have there are two important types of uh, hypoglycemic symptom one is autonomic uh, symptoms other one one is autonomic symptom and other one is neuroglycopenic symptoms autonomic symptom like uh, anxiety tremor palpitation diaphoresis paresthesia sensation of hunger all these things neuroglycopenic symptoms like uh, lack of concentration that is low gcs headache blurred vision dizziness convulsion confusion confusion and other cns manifestation in that uh, autonomic dysfunction is very important thing because many patients uh, like when the hypoglycemia before the hypoglycemia itself patient can have these type of symptoms but patients on beta blockers that is very important patients on beta blockers can mask all the symptoms so suddenly patient will uh, like uh, uh, they they develop uh, loss of consciousness altered behavior convulsions and all if the patients are on beta blockers that is called, this is called as uh, like hypoglycemia unawareness so that is, these are the symptoms now recurrent hypoglycemia can damage our uh, nervous system and uh, uh, our cardiac system hypoglycemia can produce Uh, if the patient develops hypoglycemia every day there will be increased sympathetic activity sympathetic uh, sympathetic adrenal response will be increased increased adrenal level in the body especially in the early morning hours that adversely affect our cardiovascular system so ultimately patient develops cardiac failure only because of this so recurrent hypoglycemia also not very good in patients and many patients who is having recurrent hypoglycemia you can see uh, weakness of the upper limb muscles wasting and weakness of upper limb muscles so recurrent recurrent hypoglycemia actually uh, produces damage to our nervous system and uh, cardiac system in a long term uh, uh, as a long term complication so now we can see the counter regulatory mechanism insulin decreases sugar so other hormones like glucagon growth hormone cortisol uh, steroid hormones all try to increase the blood sugar so whenever we have hypoglycemia this counter regulatory hormones uh, come into picture they try to increase the blood sugar so that is very important insulin decreases the blood sugar it produces hypoglycemia and when there is a hypoglycemia counter regulatory hormones act and uh, body will try to increase the blood sugar so this uh, this this is the mechanism behind stomach gi phenomenon that we will see afterwards that is post hypoglycemic hyperglycemia here all these uh, uh, hormones counter regulatory hormones play a major role now one of the important uh, uh, hormone is glucagon that uh, acts on the liver to stimulate glycogenolysis and 
gluconeogenesis uh, that is the main uh, main uh, hormone behind somatic phenomenon that we'll see afterwards what is somatic phenomenon so glucagon is one of the important drug uh, which can be given during hypoglycemic episode but body also will try to release a uh, lot of glucagon during hypoglycemia and try to correct the hypoglycemia by increasing the blood sugar other than that you know that epinephrine that is adrenaline we are giving uh, cortisol steroids we are giving growth hormone there also these these hormones also will try to increase the blood sugar that's why they are called as uh, counter regulatory hormones uh, for glucose level now somatic phenomenon we'll see what is somatic phenomenon that is hyper hypoglycemic hyperglycemia uh, post hypoglycemic hyperglycemia or rebound hypoglycemia so normally when we are giving night time insulin suppose a patient is getting 35 units of mixed art 35 035 some patients you can see morning blood sugars are very high morning early morning 7 7 am blood sugars are very high so it may be uh, 200 or 300 like that so normal response of any doctor is increase the night dose of insulin so they'll increase to uh, next day they'll in, they may increase to 45 units so that is dangerous because in somatic phenomenon actually because of these 35 units itself patient is developing hypoglycemia and as a counter regulatory hormone mechanism the morning sugar is increased so uh, in uh, somatic phenomenon early morning blood sugars are uh, very high but if you check the 3 am blood sugar you can see normally we check a, in whenever there is a hypoglycemic episode in the morning we check the 3 am blood sugar in conditions like somatic phenomenon 3 am blood sugar may be so can see here so morning blood sugar 7 am blood sugar may be so here we have put it as 300 so if you are checking 3 am blood sugar it may may be 50 or 55 so that is hypoglycemia after this hypoglycemic episode body will try to uh, produce more glucagon or other hormones and blood sugar suddenly increases to very high level that will produce uh, a very high blood sugar in the morning so we unfortunately we think that this is hyperglycemia and the doctor will have a tendency to increase the dose then if you increase the dose like that again uh, patient will develop further hypoglycemia or severe hypoglycemia in the uh, in, uh, around 3 am so that should be avoided so this phenomenon is called as uh, somatic phenomenon we'll see the uh, chart so early morning hours like you can see here around 3 am 4 am patient blood sugar was normal during this time and uh, suddenly during the uh, early morning hours or uh, around 3 am it it is reduced to maybe 55 or 50 then after that there will be a surge that is because of the counter regulatory hormone so if you are checking blood sugar here you may get a very high value so that value may be around 300 or 400 so you uh, you may think that uh, the night dose insulin is inadequate and you may increase the night dose insulin and further hypoglycemia can occur because of the night dose insulin so that should be avoided another important phenomenon is down phenomenon down phenomenon is just opposite of uh, uh, somatic phenomenon but uh, you can see here somatic phenomenon you get a hypoglycemia then hyperglycemia but here there is no hypoglycemia it's normal uh, blood sugar or slightly may be low there is no counter regulatory hormone and insulin action is inadequate so slowly the morning blood sugar will increase so here actually insulin uh, insulin is not adequate here insulin is more so here we have to reduce the insulin dose here we have to increase the insulin dose so throughout the night time patients blood sugars are slightly higher and early morning it is very high because insulin levels are uh, waning on that phase and patient blood sugars can go very high so here also you can check a 3 am blood sugar if you check the 3 am so here 3 am blood sugar may be hypoglycemic range 50 or 55 here it may be 200 so it is not controlled here the early morning 7 o'clock it will be 300 here it, here also it will be 300 so that is a difference between dawn phenomenon and somatic phenomenon 
In somatic phenomenon, you have to reduce the night dose insulin, whereas in uh, Dawn's phenomenon, you have to increase the night dose of insulin. So it's a ma uh, major problem when we are treating hyper, uh, hyperglycemic patients both in ICU and uh, at home. So you can see here two important time, types of early morning hyperglycemic episodes. One is Dawn's phenomenon. Throughout the night, patient's blood sugar is normal or slightly higher. And around 7 o'clock, the patient's blood sugars are very high. Here, night uh, sugars are normal. Around 3 o'clock, it dips down because insulin uh, levels are very high here. And then counter-regulatory hormones act and you can see the blood sugars are very high here. So, Dawn's phenomenon, you can remember it like that. Somagi means so much of insulin. Insulin dose is very high. Dawn's phenomenon, you uh, uh, down the insulin. That means uh, uh, you have to, insulin levels are down actually. Insulin levels are very low. So, whenever we have a early morning high blood sugar, actually it's a very important problem in emergency room or ICUs or uh, patients who are getting uh, very high morning blood sugar at home. So, you can see here three important conditions. Uh, one is, uh, uh, so here we will see only Dawn's and Somagi. Other one is low levels of insulin, similar to Dawn's phenomenon. So, bedtime insulin is normal both conditions. And 3 a.m. Uh, uh, it is normal or slightly higher in Dawn's phenomenon, but it is very low in somagi phenomenon. So you should remember somagi only because that is the most dangerous condition. If you try to increase the nighttime insulin, night dose insulin, since the early morning sugars are very high, normal tendency for a doctor is to increase the night dose insulin. So in this condition, you can see here, actually blood sugars are going very low. And because of counter-regulatory hormones during uh, morning hours, it is very high. So actually, we have to reduce the insulin here. We have to increase the insulin dose here. And HbA1c is another important investigation. Suppose you are seeing in a patient who, whom you, patient is coming is uh, coming for long-term uh, OPD follow-up. If the HbA1c level is normal, that means less than uh, 6.5 or less than 7 or less than 7.5 in an elderly individual, you, sh you should understand that uh, 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 that HbA1c, HbA1c level is normal. So there is no need to adjust the dose. So here HbA1c can help you uh, when we are managing the patient in OPD basis, but in ICUs it is not possible. So 3 a.m. blood sugars are uh, very, very important. So we have discussed about one of the important condition that is uh, somagi phenomenon and Down's phenomenon. Somagi phenomenon is an important uh, phenomenon that occurs due to post hypoglycemic rebound hyperglycemia. The action we should take is uh, taken in the ICU is you have to reduce the dose of nighttime insulin. Whereas in Down's phenomenon, the nighttime insulin is not adequate. You have to increase the dose of insulin during nighttime. Thank you.